When we fish water clarity that we are not used to, it can really mess up that thought process. If we are a clear water angler, dirty water can just cause us massive anxiety. And the opposite is true. If you're a stained or dirty water angler, well then clear water can just throw a huge wrench into the works. Now when it comes to water clarity, a lot of us have a pretty good idea what to do as far as color goes. So that's not what I'm gonna talk about. I wanna talk about strike zone as it relates to presentation distance and the amount of time that that presentation is likely to get a bite. For example, uh, I fished some topwaters down on Bull Shoals when the water was really clear and I remember sitting there bringing that walking bait looking down and seeing smallmouth rifle out of the bottom, just out of the depths, just shot straight up to the surface. They had a strike zone 15, 20 feet, even greater than that huge and then i go to a place like real foot lake that has a lot of stain to the water and we were flipping and pitching square bill crankbaits not jigs but square bill crankbaits and that presentation the strike distance or that strike zone where we might get a bite was super super short maybe only five percent of the total length of the cast so if we had let's say a 30 foot cast that means that only about a foot and a half of it has the high percentage chance of getting a bite. The rest of that cast is, I, I don't want to say wasted, but it's unlikely to get that bite. Then I fished all kinds of impoundments in Iowa where you had to drop a jig or a soft plastic right on the target. I mean, right on the stump to get a bite. That strike zone or that strike distance was only a couple inches. If you were outside of that, odds of getting a bite went way, way down. So what can we do as anglers to help ourselves mentally prepare for each of those extreme situations when we face them? Now, as far as the types of lures, most often when you're talking this dirty water, you're thinking more vertical stuff down on the bottom, right? And with the clearer water, a lot of times you're thinking more of this horizontal type of stuff. But you can do either horizontal or vertical presentations in either of those. In the dirtier water, colored water, when you're fishing down on the bottom, you want to think about drop, hop, get it back. Okay, put that lure in there, pop up, get it back. Reel it back as quick as you can, boom, another presentation. The actual presentation itself could be slow, a slow fall. You don't really move it much. You give the bass and that dirtier water a chance to zone in on it. But after it's been presented in that short range, that small little window, get it back quickly, high speed reel, make another presentation. Like I mentioned earlier with the square bill crankbait, same type of thing. You're thinking a small distance. How many of those short presentations can you make? Spinner baits, another great example. Bladed jigs. Take a look at this photo right here. So this was up at Beaver Dam Lake in Wisconsin, and I pulled up to the ramp one morning. And I was like, whoa. It was an algae bloom that hit like I had not seen hardly ever before it looked like bright lime green jello but not clear not translucent it was dirty too and the lake was extremely shallow and when i first started fishing i'm thinking man i can't even get the boat that close to the bank because the water gets so shallow i was hitting bottom but I got that out of my head, took that blade of jig, started throwing those short presentations up in really shallow water, and we started to catch a ton of fish, and a lot of those fish were in less than a foot of water, but many, many short presentations. Okay, so now I go back to the clearer, clean water stuff. What do we do? Well, as I mentioned, you can use those horizontal lures, jerk baits, top waters, those types of things to really cover a horizontal type of retriever presentation, but vertical presentations work in clear water really, really well. Also, think of your drop shot, but usually in that clear water, you're talking depth or distance. You have to get away from those fish. So I might throw that drop shot way out there a long ways, or I might have to really fish deep with it. Well, that's the type of scenario where 
I don't want to spend 90% of my day waiting for that really light weight and that lure to drop into place. So I'm going to use more of a power shot type of a method, heavier weights to get that lure into the zone that I want to target much, much quicker. So you obviously can do vertical and horizontal presentations in both types of water clarities. Keep that lure in a high percentage area and once the likelihood of that strike drops off, get it back to the boat, boom, make another one. Your confidence will soar in those water clarities that you are not used to. And hey, if you would like to watch a video that talks about catching numbers of bass, if that's your goal to get out on that water, you know what, I want to have a, a high number day, go ahead and check this one out right here. And don't forget to go out and encourage someone today. You never know how you might just change their life. For the Bass Fishing Life, I'm your host, Steve Rogers.